Is it possible to be over a feud that has not even started yet? At least the in-ring portion of the feud has not started yet. This comes from the front page of the website and was posted up by Ian Carey this afternoon. Seth Rollins recently went into detail regarding his animosity towards CM Punk. Rollins told Jimmy Traina on the SI Media podcast that he believes Punk's perspective on the industry has, quote, been extremely self-serving and that Punk has, quote, played the martyr role to a T, Rollins said of his issues with Punk. Quote, a lot of it's personal. I, a lot of it is stuff that I don't want to get into. But for the most part, I think he's just been really selfish when it comes to his perspective on the industry. I think he's been extremely self-serving, has played the martyr role to a T. Look, I don't get a lot of good things to say about parts of my relationship with him. He helped me in places where he didn't have to. Whether that was for his own good or not, I'm not entirely sure, but regardless, it helped me get to where I needed to go and do the things I needed to do. For a guy who, when I met him, made it seem like he was all about giving back to the business, he really turned into a pretty selfish guy and really wanted to take more from the industry, end quote. Rollins would then continue on to address Punk talking down to him and to WWE over the years. He said some really bad things about me, talked down to me for years and the company for years. I'm talking some really bad stuff, called me a bootlicker and crap like that. You don't know me and you don't really know what I stand for. I'm a loyal person. I just felt pretty insulted by a lot of the ways he treated me, treated the place I, that I work for, treated friends that I worked with, end quote. During the interview... Rollins even invoked the situation between Punk and former friend Colt Cabana and continued to be upset over how Punk talked about people. Quote, we actually love it. We want to give back to it and we want to make it the best it can possibly be. And I always just felt he was a fraud in that sense, or at least he turned into one at some point in the last decade. That's the long of it. It's a deep, deep rooted. I wouldn't call it a hatred, but certainly animosity. There's no animosity there. Or there is animosity there, no doubt about it, end quote. <sighs> As an objective observer just sitting here on the outside, I believe all of that. I can understand why Rollins feels that way. But here's where the pro wrestling comes in. During the conversation, Rollins also claimed that he was not given a heads up about Punk returning to WWE before Cult of Personality hit at Survivor Series. He said his reactions that night at ringside and later in the back were all genuine. However, our own Dave Meltzer reported that Rollins did, did know that Punk was going to come out at the end of the show, and his reaction to it was all part of building an angle. I mean, the one who did that right that night was Drew McIntyre, who for whatever reason left the ring, stormed out, was upset, got his stuff, and left. And that has caused far more question or seemed to cause far more question over Seth Rollins and how upset he was or truly wasn't because he was getting waist locked by Michael Cole and Corey Graves and flicking middle fingers and just screaming. It seemed like an angle to me. And much like I said about Daniel Bryan, oh God, WWE, I'll still hate you for that. Brian Danielson and his eye injury, and whether he bladed or whether there was a hard way or whatever it was that caused the blood to come out of his eye, you don't want to shy away from using reality. We kind of have to do that right now with the way the business is, with the way that social media is, with the way that everything is. You do want to take those real things and build them into this story. And I'm not saying that CM Punk and Seth Rollins shouldn't do that, but I got to be honest. With everything that Seth Rollins has said about Punk, and obviously Punk is going to have to respond to that, with Seth Rollins' current character and the fact that he has talked so much and he was such a defender of WWE, I don't know. I want to see these guys wrestle, and I know once they're in there together, it should be pretty awesome. But everything else, the promos week after week after week, all these little things in the media, this place and that place... Man, I'm already tired of it, and we haven't even gotten to the feud yet. But there's a lot more to get into, including the AEW shows coming up this weekend. Athena's got a broken nose, New Japan, and so much more. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. 
I apologize again to everybody out there who is listening to this on podcast right now because you're usually sitting there watching it live and oops. Blame Brian on this one, folks. Hey, WWE is also running house shows this weekend, too. If you happen to be uh, around New York or Pennsylvania, you have nothing else better to do. Saturday night at the, Adiranda- at the Adirondack, I should say, Bank Center in Utica, New York. And on Sunday, they'll be on the campus of Penn State University in the Bryce Jordan Center in State College, Pennsylvania. But that's enough WWE for now. We'll move it over into the Tony Conniverse. ROH World Women's Champion Athena suffered a broken nose recently. She was bloodied up during the ROH tapings held in Montreal on December 5th. After a match against local wrestler Roxanne, Athena was attacked by Billy Starks and her nose was busted open in the process. In a later deleted post, Athena wrote on social media that x-rays revealed her nose is broken, but she still plans on wrestling at ROH Final Battle on December 15th, where her match with Starks is scheduled to be the headliner. In addition to that main event, the current lineup, which takes place in Garland, Texas, looks like this. Survival of the fittest six-way elimination match to crown a new ROH World TV champion. Dalton Castle against Commander, against Lee Moriarty, against Lee Johnson, against Kyle Fletcher, against an opponent to be named. Keith Lee will face Shane Taylor in a singles match. In an I Quit match, Ethan Page faces Tony Nese. And... And this is no offense to anyone else on the show, but now what makes Final Battle, at least to me, uh, is the special challenge match that was offered up by the Blackpool Combat Club. Brian Danielson and Wheeler Yuta will team with either either Claudio Cascinoli or John Moxley to face FTR and Mark Briscoe. So the addition of that match, I think, really puts it over the top. I was wondering what they were going to add to this, and I was wondering if what they were going to add happens to be the main event. But no, Athena is going to be in the main event against Billy Starks. That's probably the best feud that they've had, hands down, in ROH since it's come back. Uh, At least it's been... It seems like, it feels like it at least. I don't don't know if that's necessarily the case, but it certainly feels like it. So Athena and Billy Starks will get their flowers by being able to main event that show. AEW Dynamite rating from Wednesday night. The show drew 823,000 viewers overall on TBS, which is down about 4% from last week's 858,000. In the 18-49 to year old demo, the show drew a .25, which equates to about 328,000 viewers and is down nearly 15% from last week. The show was actually up in people under 18 and over 50, and I'll wager that most of that bump came from the olds. They had a slight increase in women 35 to 49 as well, so there you go. During the NBA season, AEW just needs to stay over 800,000. That's it. I mean, for the most part, I think they've done that. Uh, 804,000 may be the lowest. They may have had a couple of, it may have been upper 790s there too, but as long as they stay over 800,000, I mean, I think that's, probably a good number Uh, you obviously want to aim for a million you should be very happy over nine hundred thousand. but with the nba going on right now getting eight hundred thousand and having a let's just say a respectable number in the 18 to 49 demo i mean that's all you can really ask for i mean it's not like obviously espn's got part of this too but it's not like warner brothers discovery is too upset over the fact that you know some of those nba games (laughs) You know, they're paying for, and they want those ratings, so they're, I'm sure, fine with it.